Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Falls from Iron. So, housekeeping, let's get that out of the way. Please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And hit that bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, we thank you for your support, which segues into, very nicely, the Iron Supporting Food Bank charity that we would like to encourage you guys to support in this cost of living crisis there are many families out there that are struggling to put food on the plates of their children and this charity tries to resolve that particular issue this centers on families around the new and borough area so families that are local to west ham united i will if i remember which i i do have a habit of forgetting don't i duke I will try and copy and paste this and put this in the comment section so you guys can dive into that and give generously. No donation is too small. As always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support. In this matter, we are here to discuss the, in the Premier League match day 6 of 38, Chelsea versus West Ham United at Stamford Bridge 3 p.m. kickoff tomorrow. It's been a while since we had a Saturday 3 p.m. kickoff, hasn't it, Duke? Duke, it appears that his internet has frozen. Either that or mine has dropped out. Are you still there, Duke? Oh, no. What's gone wrong? What, you or me? I'm still here. No, well, Walshy's in the chat. He'll, he'll probably put me right because I can you're see there. you. I'm, I'm, here. I'm here. Yes, you're there. Yes. No, you're there. I'm here. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not there. You're there. Yes. I'm here. Do you want me to start again? Uh, uh, um, hi. How are you? Hello. Hello. That's good. That's all a bit weird. Right. Should we start again? Duke, it's been a while since a 3 p.m. Yeah. Saturday kickoff. I forgot what it feels like to be excited on a Friday night for a Saturday game. Um... I'm used to I'm used to the, the the absolute bullshit of everyone starting. You know, sometimes there'd be in a Premier League game on a Friday night. Um, sometimes, you know, you then go into a, a Saturday, and I'm sat there. It's, I, I, don't get me wrong. Listen, I'm not moaning that we're in Europe, Rob. That's that's not what I'm doing. I'm glad we're in Europe, and if by playing in the two European competitions that play on a Thursday night, we have to play most of our games on a Sunday. Then so be it. it you know, I, I know there are people that are probably going to be watching this, um, yourself included, I suppose, because you guys have to travel to these games on a Sunday and it's not always easy with, you know, with trains or anything else. So I, I, I get that side of it. But as I say, if, if it's a trade-off that we have to play Sunday because we're in Europe on Thursday, I take it all day long. But it's just the... Um, it's just that waiting, Rob, to be honest with you. That's why, also, I hate waiting all weekend for a Monday night kickoff. Oh, yeah. my God, leave me alone. Like, honest to God. Don't get me wrong. Again, if we play on Thursday, it's not that much of a wait in between games. Mm. But I, I generally hate a Monday kickoff. But, like I say, if... Um, if it's a trade-off, it's a trade-off. But I'm actually quite excited for a three o'clock kickoff. Yeah, I also get to go to success. France. Eh? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Your little chateau on the south of France. Yes, um, something like I that. I thought, I thought, well, Walsh, you just put that in the chat. I thought 14. it was 14. Yeah. It was 14 consecutive league, uh, league games on a Sunday. Uh, the, the, the Villa game just gone. Are they all on Sunday. I wasn't sure if I thought they were referring to um, just purely Saturdays. So it might whether it was the game was a Monday or a Friday. Possibly, or, I don't yeah. Know. No, I I, um, I I thought it was our fourteenth consecutive Sunday league game. I, I, hmm. I might be wrong. Okay. It might have been fourteen consecutive non-Saturday kickoffs. To be honest with you, I don't care. I like I said at the start, I'll take the trade-off, Rob. I'll take yeah. the trade off. If it means that we're European successful, then I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was Paul Merson that said on Sky Sports at one time or another, and he turned around and said it's only the crap teams, or a diff slightly different word, slightly more brutal, 
um, play on a Saturday. And like you say, if if the price of advancement into European competition and, and possibly a deep run into that competition is that we're going to have to play on a Sunday or, or even if we have to do what you don't like, the, the Monday evening game, I, I, like I say, I'd take it all day long. If at the end of the season, we're, you know, Declan Rice is going up and lifting up the Conference League trophy, no one's going to care. No, not at all. And, Hi, and, guys. And this is... Hey, buddies. You all right? And, and Lee. Hi, mate. Um, Lee, I, I will say, I will say, Rob, right, that, you know, to be able to play on a Saturday, we've got to qualify for Champions League. Do I think, personally, we are Champions League ready? No, I don't. That's a different story. That's a whole other day. Now, that being said, do I think we could compete in in certain in, in a certain group? Probably. Probably. I don't need your laptop at the moment, Beck, and my one seems to be running okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, write I, it I, out. If I if I think that um, if I think we we have more chance of winning the conference this year. And playing Europa League next year, it means three seasons on the spin. We're playing on a Thursday, playing on a Sunday. Give me Thursday, Sunday. Give me Thursday, Sunday. Give me Thursday, Sunday. That I agree with, Kent. That that's yeah, pissed it was me a off. A bit late in the day. And at one point, was it not on Sky Sports at two o'clock? I don't know if it was a televised game when we was on the Sunday, which was what it was originally. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you, Duke. And obviously, as soon as they said it was a 3 p.m. on a Saturday, it's like, well, then it's not going to be on the telly then, is it? Yeah. No. No. So, there you go. But, yeah, I mean, listen, it is uh, it is what it is. We're going to play ah, it. Ah, yeah, kids. And as as we discussed, Sorry. hi guys. Um, as we discussed yesterday, I think the, the Metropolitan Police are, are going to be uh, all hands to the pump, aren't they? Well... Could be an interesting day for me because I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of Irish and Scottish Celtic uh, contingent ah, in was. the local area, and we have obviously the the Glaswegian derby tomorrow morning or tomorrow early tomorrow afternoon at twelve thirty. Oh, I'd forgotten not about that. Not only that, not only that, Rob. We also have the Merseyside derby on TV yeah. at half past 12. So I have a large Liverpool contingent that also come in my pub. Then you've also got Millwall Cardiff down the road at three yeah. o'clock. You've got Chelsea West Ham just across the bridges um, at three o'clock. You've got Brentford Leeds Leeds at three o'clock, just the other side of London. And you're thinking, now nah, you're all right. If I was if I was an officer, I, I retired early because I ain't fancy. <laughs> especially if they turn around and go, uh, PC Stribling, yes, sir. Uh, you got London Bridge tomorrow? No, I fucking haven't. I see you later on. I quit. No, I'm not doing it. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you no. signed up for, you big. Jeffy. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll tell you what though. Um, do you know? Have you heard of the Nutty Turnout, Rob? No, go on. Do you know who the Nutty Turnout me. are? No, right. no, no. Go on. Now you turn out our um are a crew, a firm, shall we say, from the uh okay. from the eighties okay. that were uh, attached to a local club down the road here. And they were not quite despised by the bushwhackers, but they weren't they they used to there used to be a lot of infighting at London Bridge between these two uh and, and at at, uh, at the uh, the one up the road. Um because they didn't like each other too much, the Bushwhackers and the Nutty Turnout, despite the fact that they're both Millwall. Um, and I was talking to a young gentleman. I say a young gentleman. He's in his, uh, he's in his 50s now, late, late 50s, early 60s now. And he told me about a time he stood toe-to-toe with a, a certain gentleman by the name of Cass. Oh. It, it was the only person that, um, that put him on his bum, is what he told me. Cass was the only guy that he didn't fare well against. And we had a drink and we, we had a good chat and it was actually quite nice. He's a, 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 I'm not going to not gonna mention any names because I don't want anyone getting yeah, yeah, any yeah. bother because they're, they're still known. Um, but I had a really nice chat with him. We had a drink together. We shook hands. We, we spoke about um, 
what Millwall did for Isla um, at the ground and everything else mm-hmm. and, and, you know, said thank you to him because, you know, it, it's, it's the least I could do. You know, bought him a drink. Like I say, we had, we had a good chat together. And I turned around and I, I made a joke to him. I said, can you imagine if your boys... Um, could see you now standing here, you know, shaking hands, arm in arm with a with a West Ham fan having a beer. It was like, no, don't fucking say nothing. I don't want them to know. <laughs> I don't want them to know. But I just want to give him a shout out because you, uh, you, I, you had the CCTV footage, though. Surely it was in your pub. Yeah, I know. Listen, if they if people turn <laughs> up, I'm gonna, gonna. But listen, he, he was a genuinely nice guy, and and yeah, yeah. you know, he said that was then. It's a different story now, but it was. I just with with everything that's going on this weekend. Obviously, like I say, Millwall, Cardiff, Leeds at Brentford, West Ham at, at Chelsea. I'm not saying there's going to be any run-ins in and around London, but I wouldn't fancy being on the on the Met Police. <laughs> on the, Makes you wonder, doesn't football. it? I mean, someone should have surely looked at the calendar and went, "Ooh, we might want to well, stagger these kickoffs." Well, listen, I heard a rumor way back in the day when we first got relegated. The the the, the Canio season, <laughs> Trevor Brookin got relegated last game of the season against yeah, yeah. Birmingham. Birmingham. Yep. That that first season back in the championship, that first home game against Millwall was played on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. If my memory serves me correctly, because I would have been about a twelve it. o'clock kickoff or something dark it, like that. It wouldn't was it? it was, yes. Um it cost more money policing wise to please West Ham versus Millwall on the Sunday than it did to please all of the London teams in the Premier League the Saturday before. (laughs) 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 So, sod being on, sod being, honestly, sod being London, because it will be London Bridge and and, and Mm -hmm. Waterloo and and that kind of area, because that's where a lot of, a lot of fans are going to be going through. You know, the Leeds fans will come into probably Waterloo, or maybe Houston, uh, but they'll have to say, come probably more like Houston or to, Kings Cross, wouldn't they? You know, they'll go over to Brentford. You know, you've got Millwall. They're at home, so you still have some coming in from from a field. You'll have, uh, like I say, the, the you know, Cardiff fans are going to be at London Bridge because the away pub is the the Green King Pub, the George down opposite Borough Market. That's the away pub. I know that because I. Had the oh. pleasure of having a having a good old good old drink uh, with the Coventry fans before they played Millwall. Um, it's very interesting situation <laughs> that was, but no, it was. Um, tomorrow will be interesting for the police. Needless to say, sorry, I've absolutely sidetracked for about fifteen minutes there. That's all right. That's all right. Do you want to give a score prediction what for Norwich B Cov? Honestly, I don't know enough about Coventry. Um, I don't know how they've got on this season. I'll be honest, I've, I've not seen much of Norwich either. Uh, I'm actually, you're at home. I'm going to go 2-0. I'm going to go 2-0, uh, Norwich, go two Elliot. Nil. Elliot's going to carry on watching then. If, if you'd have predicted a, a, an away win, oh, yeah. I think he might have switched off. So, and uh, evening, Sir Hill. And uh, don't forget, we're all going to the Lewisham Tavern tomorrow, she says. Yeah, no, that's the French. That's Le Chant Tavant, Rob. Oh, it's I all, see. If you, if, you, if, you go, if you go back, go back to her the comment. Accents. The accents, I've clocked Yeah, it. look, yeah, the yeah, accents yeah. above the, the E's and the A's. Yeah, the Le Chant. It's very, Le Chant very, very continental, it has to be said, Rebecca. I, I, well I, done. I'm going to be putting some French flags up in the pub tomorrow. And Lee, Lee says he loves the story, so don't worry. You can, you can go full on Jack and Ori. He'll be happy. I tell you what, a lot anyway. of people do come here for our unscripted bollocks that we do, let, Rob. Let's not, we, let's we're, not we're mess quite, around. We're quite good at it, to be fair. We we're are bad at it, oh, depending yeah. upon which Very way you so. want to look at it. Anyway, let's before Very we sure. get on to the starting 11s or the predicted starting 11s, more to the point, let's get the officials out of the way. The referee is Andy Madley. His assistant, his, his assistants even, assistants, um, are Harry Leonard well, and Scott Ledger. The fourth official is Thomas Brammel. The VAR is Jared Gillette and the assistant VAR. It's that fella again, Konstantin Hatsidakis. That's, uh, yeah, I do. Where, it's a you... great name. I, I, I think he, he might have a little bit of uh, Greek heritage. I could be wrong. I could be American wrong. American Greek, it's got to be. 
It's got to be. Ameri- Con- Listen, Constantine is a very much an American name. Let's not dick around. But Hatsidikis. I mean, no, I mean, it's, that's Greek. What, Constantine? It's yeah. American. Stop it. Probably right, was right, back in the what. 1600s, Rob. Right, I'm. I'm gonna get little little history lesson for you. I did my family tr- my family tree. Right, I got back to my 15 times great grandfather. Jesus Christ! I got back to 1530. Right, and I'm three. He, yeah, and he was from Constantine in Cornwall, 1530. It's before America even existed. That's crazy, isn't it? There you go. That's you crazy. Go. Anyway, right. Um, I am going. Hang on. Get rid of that. Because, Duke, the next thing we're going to get into is we're going to do the starting 11 predictions, old son. Well, for you too. Um. Okay, so hang on. Oh, right, that, let me get. I'll tell you what, that was very quick. Did you? Is it because my internet's so shit? Did you play the whole thing? Because that was only about half a second of the 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 roll I, VT. Then it, it could well be your internet, old son. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Yeah, do you know what? I I actually have had a little bit of a a headache with trying to predict both of these elevens. To be perfectly honest with you, formations as well and personnel. Because if you look at Chelsea, they've been changing formation left, right and centre. So anyway, so this is my best attempt at it. And obviously, Duke, you are going to get into the nuts and bolts. And you guys in the live chat, please, if you want to put in your 11s, formation, personnel, everything, get it all out there. and We'll have a little pick through it afterwards. So I have gone in goal, Lucas Fabianski. That was straightforward. I suspect he's going that David Moyes is going to select a back three. Carrot and Zuma, no problem. Pretty straightforward. I've got a suspicion because Aaron Cresswell's taken a bit of a knock and he may well be struggling for the game tomorrow. I think there's possibly going to be a late fitness test that he may have to undertake. But I have put my head on the chopping block and I've said that it will be Angelo Ogbonna at left centre back. Declan Rice and Thomas Socek, obviously, I think they're pretty much nailed on. Vladimir Kufal will be the right wing back. Ben Johnson, I don't think he's going to make it. And I suspect that Emerson Palmieri will make an appearance against his former employers. Now, this is probably the bit where I had to go really thinking about how is it going to go. I suspect Paqueta is going to start or Paqueta, whatever. I suspect he's going to be the number 10. Up top, Crisps. I've gone with Antonio and Bowen. But I could make a case for Skamaka. He's a 75% chance, according to the Premier League website, of making the cut tomorrow. But we'll wait and see. Duke, talk to me. What are your thoughts? Oh, I'm aroused by that, Rob. I'm aroused by that lineup right there. That is. I'm I'm hoping that Palmieri uh, has has had a little bit more of a a training session on this because he, it seemed like he was thrown in the deep end against Villa. Yep. On a, on on this formation, and then <clears> was taken off at half time for whatever reason. I didn't think he was good enough personally, but um, yeah, I, I like this, Rob. Um, I, I like this a lot. I think you're right. I think Kent Kent might be a little bit. I think he might be wrong with a four two three one, but then he also might be right with the Paquetta on the bench and the Benny mm. um, and the Benny starting. But I actually think you might be wrong at right wing back. I think might be might wrong. See Harrison Ashby there. Really? Yeah, I think you might see Ashby there, mate. Yeah. Despite the fact it may he may have gone out of the think, door. I, well, I reckon he's been given some uh some reassurances on game time. Oh. Otherwise he probably would have gone. Uh, there must have been. Listen, well maybe, maybe not. There's there's something that, that was not quite what? <clears throat> Tolentino Coelho no de Lima. Oh. 
Okay. I I think I think you'll I, find I that know. that is actually. I, I don't know. I got a funny feeling that is actually uh, Lucas Paqueta's. Is it Lucas Paqueta's real name? Paqueta's real name. Is I it? Think, I don't I know. Think... Just drop me a ring. Yeah, I'm. I'm just double checking. If it is, anyway. I I, I also agree. Yeah, Lucas with Tolentino pick. Coelho de Lima. Yeah. I agree with Epic that if he's fit, if Skamaka's fit, then Antonio has no right to start games. If he's fit. I want to put that caveat in there. Now he played well against um, back to Ashby. No, he did. I did, but he had a reason to start. That, that's what I'm getting at, Rob. Mm. If he's not fully okay. fit, then yes, you know. So uh, back to Harris and Ashby. Yes, I, I've, I've not, I've not heard guarantees, but I've heard whispers mm. that he was given some sort of assurances of game time. Now. Whether that means he's going to be our cup right back, whether that means he's going to start a couple of Premier League games before Christmas or whatever. I know we don't want to lose him. I know within the club he is rated quite highly. The problem is um, we're, we're in a position where we've, we've lost a couple of kids in the last six months, four, five months, three months, two months. One's gone to Leeds, one's gone to Sunderland. Is it now that the kids are seeing that they don't get the opportunity to get starts and uh, they have to go elsewhere? Do I think Perkins is going to start for Leeds in, in the league this season? No, I don't. No, no, I don't. Do I think that if Ashby went to Newcastle, Ashby would be starting league games this season? No, I don't. No. He's there as he'd be going there as the third choice, a third choice right back. He's currently third choice here, but he's got more chance to start here with the amount of games we hopefully should be playing. Did Harris Nasby start? At I don't know whether he started. Tell you what, I'm go I'm gonna Gatesy, hang you're on. up. Hold on. Right. Harrison Ashby. Da, 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 da. I know he's Barry Ashby's son. Oh, um, according to this, yes, he was Kent. Well done. Good knowledge. He's been at Absolute West Ham for, since fun. 2010, though. He has been at West Ham since 2010. So he, he would have been about nine, ten years of age himself by the time he walked through the door at West Ham. So how yeah. old was he at Chelsea? Bloody hell. It's concerning, anyway. isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is well, you got this us is up what against... we discussed with Tony Carr, isn't it? About the young kids, sort of yeah. like eight, nine, whatever. So Lee's saying that Kara will deal babies, with Sterling, babies, isn't it? Coming through the door. I I agree with that statement, Walshy. I do, I, I like think it. it's a good time to play them as well. They they do seem to be not quite yep. hitting the straps. It has to be said. But anyway, right. That is what I've picked for Chelsea's. Now, I suspect, rightly or wrongly, Fafana will start on the right of a back three, which will also include Silva and Koulibaly. Uh, I suspect that the wing backs may well be Kukurea and Azpilicueta, because I suspect that Reese James... Reese James has is, is got a bit of an issue, so I suspect that he might go with Azpilicueta. The central midfield pairing, I suspect, will be Gallagher and Jorginho with Sterling, Mount and Breuer as the front three. Talk to me, Duke. Well, I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad that Sakaria and Albama Yang didn't get done until after midnight last night. So that meant that there was absolutely no chance of them two playing against us. Uh, well, Albama Yang, you know the reason why um, he ain't playing. It's not. It's not so much to do with that. Did you not hear what well, happened to him? He's, he's got a fractured jaw from uh, mm. the home invasion that he suffered. Yeah. Um, I am Bar and Zakaria. Oh, mate. And Zakaria, like I'm I'm just over the moon that he's got nowhere near it, mate. To be honest with you, I I think he's outstanding. Who's um Who's Sarah Ramsey, uh, Elliot, on your subs bench? 
Sarah Ram. Oh, you got a lady okay. on. He's got. A, he's got a lady on the subspend share. Look, I'm guessing that's not. I'm guessing I, that's. Well, he hasn't name, used commas. Just looks like Sarah Ramsey. No, which is why I went. Who's Sarah Ramsey? And who's who's you got? Cruel Warrens. You got Hanley Omabamidieli. <laughs> Try saying yeah, that after a couple him. of stellars. I did. Listen, I did really well. You got Byron Nunes. You got McLean Campwell. Hernandez Sargent, and then you've got Gun Gibson. <laughs> no, you've got Subs Gun, Gibson Dow, Subs Gun. Sarah Ramsey, and Subs Gun, Gibson Dow, Sarah Ramsey, and Pookie Ida. I love it. Absolutely love it. Either that or that's just, that's that's going to be, that's going to be uh, Elliot's uh, firstborn son's name. All yeah. of that. Oh, Aaron that's, Ramsey. Oh, Joel, fuck it. Is it is, as in the geezer that was at uh, Rangers, Juventus, Juventus fella? You... You ain't yeah, got yeah, him, yeah. have you? There can't be another Aaron Ramsey, is there? Is that, did he go to Norwich then? I missed that. You're beginning to sound as shocked as I am if that's the case. Yeah. Elliot, yeah. tell me, is that the Aaron Arsenal God Rangers be. Juventus Ramsey, Mr. Penalty? Can't, oh, there can't Walsh be two Sunday Aaron Ramseys that play football, is there? Back, huh? Can't be. Hey, tell us in a minute. If he is so inclined. Anyway, once he comes back, he'll tell you. What's your, so so where are the strengths and weaknesses, do you think, here, Duke? Listen, there are... I still don't know whether that's right or not. <laughs> Me neither. Um, there... What their weaknesses, their weaknesses are the two centre backs on the left hand side of the pitch in Koulibaly and Silva. Because mm. although they're both massive great lumps, yep. Koulibaly's still adapting and Silva's legs are going. Yep. So and Kula Bali makes some silly, silly fucking mistakes. I think if we could, I think if we could throw um, Skamaka and Antonio at them tomorrow, um, I think we could be laughing because I, I reckon that Kula Bali might just put himself in a in a serious. Um, cheers, Krishna. Um, I think Kula Bali might put himself in a serious, serious situation where he makes too many kind of silly. Fouls on on the two centre forwards, and he's gone again. Oh, I hate my internet. I hate my internet. Yeah, I hate uh, my it, internet. It, it Robert, it seems it does seem to be a little bit all over the place tonight. I'm gonna this I'm gonna try something live streaming. I might, you might lose me he's again. Gonna... I don't care. Uh, that's that's all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just talk. That's fine. So anyway, yeah. Um I think we got this all day long. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm looking at the weak link. If that's the 11, I think the weak links are as Piliqueta cuz we've all due respect to him and he was he was Dave. a fantastic player in his day. Dave, yeah. I think he could be got at. So I I think that Emerson could get a little bit of joy down that flank. Uh if it's Emerson that starts, of course. I think that obviously Silver as well and Koulibaly, I mean, you've highlighted them. I think that if if we can have the power of Antonio, if they, the 11 that I've selected, let's suppose for the purposes of argument, that I've got these two bang on. I, th I think that the power of Antonio and the pace of Bowen will cause those two all sorts of problems. Fafana, I think, is is a good signing for Chelsea, though. I've got to say, I think he's a good player. I'd have been quite happy to get him but, in, but we've got Kera. But and, again, uh, he's not one Aguirre used to. Position. He's not going to be one used to playing as uh, as a part of a three centre backs. So that could be interesting. Part of my reasoning, mm -hmm. Sahel, uh, Sahil, is that I, I would want to see Epic. Ashby there. He, he can't. He can't. He's got a broken jaw, mate. He won't be starting Obama Yang. No chance. Um, uh, Yana Six says James is again. I don't think he's going to start though. I think I don't think he's going to start, mate. I don't think he's going to start. They, according to what I've got, James Chalabar and Loftus Cheek, they've all returned to training 
um, after an illness, knee injury and in issue and hamstring injury, respectively. But I don't think that they're going to start. But we'll see. Wow. Lee's, Lee's going aggressive. Oh, look, you've upset him now. See that, Elliot? Take care, mate. I didn't upset him. What did I do? My internet. Oh, no. To me. It's all, all that porn you've been downloading, Hates mate. Me. No, I think Logan's playing Fortnite and Grace oh, have is you got to go, have something you, on her laptop. Have you got to go and tell him off? We around. could hear some screaming, ladies and gentlemen. Someone's we could hear some let's, screaming. Let's wait. I agree with Kent now. The, 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 the transfer there is brilliant. For, Did they for buy him? No, I think it's loaned. Is it? Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Okay. He, he says he's only 17. Cheers, mate. Look after yourself. Right. Okay. Let me get rid of that. And then we got to get onto this. And then there was one because as I pressed the button, Duke's buggered off. He'll be back. He'll be back. Right. As I say, I had a little bit of a nightmare trying to select the 11s, the personnel, the formation, because I think that recently both managers have made little adjustments, little tweaks. And obviously there's an awful lot of players that there's question marks over Cresswell. There's question marks over Skamaka, various other players on the Chelsea side. As far as that's concerned, Reese James is, is a doubt. So yeah, I, I, I've had a bit of a tough time trying to work it all out. I'm going to go, and guys in the live chat, please jump in on this and we can pick through it. I've had a long, hard think about how this game's going to go if those are the 11s that are going to take to the pitch. I'm going to go Chelsea 1, West Ham 2. I think we're going to do them. I think that it'll, it'll be a struggle. Don't get me wrong. It will be two teams that, you know, if, if if Chelsea click, then we could be in a bit of a problem. We could be a, a, have a bit of a problem on our hands. But they've been really patchy in their form. I mean, they lost, what was it, 2-1 against Southampton. They got absolutely stuffed at Leeds 3-0. And we just seem to be... In the, the last couple of games, you look at the V-Borg away leg, you go look at Villa and you look at the Tottenham game. And all right, you could make a case and turn around and say, we didn't exactly look brilliant in the first half against Villa. And, and I would accept that point. But fundamentally, the results have started to improve. And I just personally think that maybe we're playing them at the right time. They're in a little bit of disarray. And we seem to be just coming together. We seem to be hitting a little bit of form. The signing of Paqueta could be absolutely crucial to, to us getting a result. And I suspect that he will be involved from the start. And I'm going to go Chelsea 1, West Ham United 2. Duke. I'm inclined to agree with Andy and Becker. And go 1-0. Uh um, it's either, yeah, I think it's either going to be a 1 0 West Ham win or it'll be a 2 1, like you've just said. Um, I think we'll just, like we said earlier, a better time to best time to play them at the minute. They're at sixes and sevens, they know how, they, they don't have an out and out striker at the moment. Obviously, mm -hmm. you've got Bouger there, so we kind of see. Maybe see what we would have got a little bit of him if 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 it come in. Um, I I personally think that. Uh, well, I'll do my comparison shortly, um, but I think, and so if we can start Antonio and Skamaka tomorrow, dear God, why be told anyone that gets in their way? So you you would drop Bowen completely out, would you? Yeah. Or you ask him to play right wing back. Ooh, could he do that, do you think? Probably not, but fuck it. Mm, fair enough. Oh, <laughs> you had an infiltrator. 
my turn. My turn for a half naked child. Wouldn't be the first time. Wouldn't nope. be the first time we've had something like that, would there? I mean, you've had my son coming out of the sort of like the, the bathroom, haven't you? Or the, out of the kitchen and in and a towel. And starts you know. halfway. Kind of like... It's like, it's too late now. You're, you're there. Just go. Yeah. Crack on. <laughs> Nobody cares. So, and if they do, it doesn't really matter to me. So, Ken's reckoning Bro Brozier next summer. Is Antonio's Possibly. replacement? Possibly. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Bowen can't play right wing back. He's left footed. I couldn't play centre forward because I couldn't shoot, but I did it a few times. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Right. You want to do your player comparison, don't you? We did this for the Tottenham game. Um, Goncalo Cardoso has completed a permanent transfer to yep. CS Maritimo. Just come up on my phone. That was no yep. real great loss, was it? Yeah. He didn't really have... Did he play a, a... I don't think he played a Premier League game. He might have played in the is. League Cup, I think. Maybe. He was a Pellegrini signing, wasn't he? Yeah. So... Yeah, he was one of them, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, do you want to do your player Let's comparison, old son? Bring it up. Right. Okay. So, you've decided to go... And I'll go... I'll, tell you, I'll go full screen. You've decided to do a direct comparison between our captain, Mr. Declan Rice, and yep. Jorginho. Yep. Who, I think it's fair to say, from the conversation that we had before we hit start broadcast, I don't think you're particularly a fan of. Would I be right? 90% um, of those goals in, in his goals column, Rob, have come from penalties. Um, I, well, I really don't... Probably. I really don't rate him. I really don't rate him. I, I mean, people... Uh, let me rephrase that. Chelsea fans. Chelsea fans love a comparison between Jorginho and Declan Rice. They, mm. they constantly... If, you, if you're a social media fan like I am and you're on Twitter, you know, Declan Rice, when he plays for, for West Ham... He ain't all that. If you listen, if you listen to Chelsea fans, he ain't all that. He ain't. He ain't great. Blah, 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 blah. You listen to um, you listen to Chelsea fans when Declan Rice plays for England. Oh, Deck, please come to Chelsea. We love you. Come home. Wank, 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 wank. Right. And but when he plays, <laughs> but when he plays for West Ham, Jorginho is the better player. I tell you now, right? Declan Rice is the better player. Hands down, head and shoulders above Jorginho, in my opinion. And I think the game can be won in the middle of the park tomorrow yep, if Declan absolutely. Rice puts this young man, I say young man, he's 30 now, Declan mm. Rice puts this man in his place tomorrow. It shows the Chelsea fans at Stamford Bridge that Jorginho ain't even fit to, pardon me, ain't even fit to lace Declan Rice's boots. Let's let's go through it, shall we? Okay, so Declan Rice has got 172 appearances to Jorginho's 130. This is in their entire Premier League career. Premier now, League career, see, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously, as you say, you, you've referenced 20 goals for Jorginho. He's a clear winner in that particular statistic. Um, we'll dip, we'll drill into what you said about the majority of his goals in a moment. The assists, Declan Rice has a 9-5 advantage. If we scroll down, Declan Rice has 22 yellow cards to Jorginho's 25. Attacking stats. So, yes, yeah, there's there's the goals again. Yes, you can't argue that Jorginho has the advantage there. We'll as I say we'll get into the, the nuts and bolts of that particular statistic momentarily. Minutes per goal, 511 for Jorginho, 2,393 for Declan Rice. I think it probably sh is worth referencing, though, that for an awful lot of Declan Rice's 170-odd Premier League appearances, that he was playing purely as a defensive midfielder Where or as a centre-back. Where he should be. Central defensive midfielder and hold. I don't care. I don't care the arguments. I don't care the experiment. My opinion, Declan Rice is better mm. when he sits deeper. Yeah. But you look at the shots and the shots on target, Declan Rice is a clear winner. 
117 shots for Declan Rice to 63 for Jorginho and 32 on target to 30 for Jorginho. That's a little bit I, more of a... I'd be curious as to know whether penalties on target count as a shot on target, Rob, because, I, again, I'd sure. be interested to know of that 30 shots on target, how many were penalties? Do you see mm. what I mean? Because I well, I do believe of the 14 goals that he's got more than Declan Rice, I do believe all 14 of those are going to be penalties, Rob. It, well, looking there, it's 18, 18 penalties scored. Obviously, well, he had the then. one saved by Fabianski. So 18 of his 20 Premier League goals have come via spot kicks. There you go then. So I was right. It's about 97, 98% ratio of penalties. Yeah. So of his 80, of his 30 shots on target, 18, 19, if you include the missed penalty that was saved, 19 shots have, have been on target from, from penalties. So that actually takes that, that stat down to, to 11. Mm. Right? Yeah. So again, Declan Rice as I think Kent's just put, he has more influence on a game playing CDM and makes the players around him play better when he's there. Couldn't agree more, Kent. Could not agree more. As I said momentarily ago, Jorginho isn't fit to lace Declan Rice's boots. 19 shots off target for a guy that has, you know, look at Declan Rice's, I get that. But of his 30, 19 shots have been on target from penalties. So that's, it. that's only 11 shots out of 63. So he's probably, his stats there. I mean, could, could you do the maths here, Rob? Go on. 117 shots Declan Rice has taken. Right. I don't need you to do the maths. I'm being facetious, by the way. Oh, okay. 32 of them have been on target. 55 yeah. have been on off target. I'll make that 87. Where's the other 30 shots? Mm, yeah, that's that's a point. Same with well, Jorginho. Suppose, uh, yeah, but would do block shots. If they're on target, Is that surely? another... I don't know. Yeah, it's well, an well, interesting okay, so point. Then, but then they, should have, then they should have that as block shots on the... Yeah. On, on the on there, but you see what I mean. So Declan yeah. Rice has more of a more of a um, he has more influence on a game. I mean, if you look at their their shooting accuracy, there sixty one percent. But again, nineteen of those on target have, have been penalties. So it's very mis that that whole thing there is incredibly misleading. Yeah, you know, there you go. Penalty it's scored eighteen. You know, 18, you go one, further. Yeah. yeah, you know, you go further down, and and you, you look at goals with his right foot. Yeah, well, they're all penalties. Piss off! I'm not interested. Headed goals, goals from inside the box. Nineteen. I'm not surprised they've all been penalties. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's all big chances scored. Penalties. Yes, well done. Um, it 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 annoys me. Um, yeah. If you look, there you go, assists out, outside of the game. Yeah, all right, big chances created. Again, does that come from penalties? Because, again, that's 19. Um, you know, passes, yeah, again. No, I don't think they'd be big chances created, would they? De By the way, Declan Rice doesn't like to pass forward, Rob. I just want to point out. Uh, well... He's got 2,285 passes forwards against 859 backwards. Against his 2,704 and 1,200 backwards. So, mm, let's, we'll, we'll figure that one out later, Chelsea fans, when you tell me he only passes fucking backwards. Piss off. Sorry. Yeah, those stats don't really bear that one out, do they? I mean, his pass completion stats are, are very, very good. 88.94%. Against Declan's eighty-seven point six zero. So if you only pass two yards, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, there is that. There is that. But look at this: a hundred crosses for Declan Rice and only eighteen for Jorginho. And he's been dispossessed five times less, despite the fact he's played about what was it, another thirty, forty extra games in the Premier yeah. League. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, he doesn't lose the ball very much. Um, Defending clean sheets, there, there's only one in it, so it's not really sort of worth getting too much but into. Blocks, Look interceptions, at tackles, successful tackles. What, what more do you need? Clearances, headed clearances. What more do you need from a man? 
Like honestly, right? I can I I can understand why, based on just his defensive Rob, I can see why Chelsea wanted him. I can see why why Manchester City, why Arsenal, why Liverpool, why you know, Man U want the man. For the simple fact is, he is. He's an outstanding player. Outstanding player. Look at the distance run. And in, and, but not even that, Rob. He's played, he's played 30, 42 games more on here. Look, yeah. He's yep. been subbed off six times compared to Dopey Bollocks' 38. So it shows you he has more influence on a game. Could it also be argued that Chelsea's squad over the tenureship of both of their times at the club, that you would say that Chelsea's squad has been deeper Stronger. in terms of quality? Yes. And that's the reason? But I mean, I'm not being funny. Who who have we got that that could be quality wise no as good as Declan Rice? Whereas Jorginho at Chelsea, they've probably got a raft of players that could do his job. Let's well, be completely honest. We mentioned the name earlier. I asked where he was. It was in Golo Kante. But I'm not. I'm yeah, not getting to that. We're, we're talking. We're talking about these two players as is. Uh, Chelsea are always going to have a better, better squad depth than us, Rob, and, and more quality players. That's just the way it is until, but you know, not being funny, they've got a multi-billionaire owner again. It's the second time mm. that they've had one. Um, but I tell you now, this guy coming in now won't want to lose, won't want to throw money away like Abramovich was. No. He's a businessman. No. He's here to make money as well. Um, but for me, I just like to say, I want to do the comparisons on these two boys. Um, I'm bored of listening to, to Chelsea fans crack on about um, about Jorginho and, and how Declan Rice wouldn't get anywhere near the team. I think that says it all there, boys. Just, you know, I'm, I'm, any Facebook shit, yeah. uh, Twitter shit I get from this, I'm just going to direct them to that because, well, there's nothing more to say other than goals of which 19 were penalties, you know, yeah. 18 scored out of 30. It means he's only got 12 goals. It does skew the play. stats a little, doesn't it? Massively, massively. And again, shots on target, 60, 63 compared to Declan Rice's, whatever it was. Well, again, 19 of those, oh, 19 of those were penalties. So it doesn't really count for me. Yeah, okay, you've still got to score your penalty. I get that. But it, like you say, it absolutely throws it all out of, of, uh, all out of whack. But for me, Declan Rice is the better player. And if Declan Rice... Puts uh, puts the little man in his pocket tomorrow, or maybe maybe what Declan Rice could do is go to Mother Care beforehand. They're quite diminutive, isn't he, Jorginho? He could put him in one of them little baby carriers and stroll around the pitch with him hanging off his chest. Controversial, controversial. What are they going to do? Um, they could call you rude words. They could send send you nasty nasty messages on social media. Fucking wow! I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I kind of worked out. I was going to get that response. Duke, <gasps> Forge, Forge House Fun House of Five fascinating football factoids. Jesus Christ! But that, mate, there's far too many there now. There's now there's now six, and we're only doing five, six F's there. There's only five five factoids. Well, there you go. Listen. I, I just, just had to. That seems to be getting longer as we do more of these. Yeah. That's going to be taking up the you whole screen as a banner eventually, isn't it? You're, you're literally going to keep going. Yeah. I look yeah. forward to the next one. We have scored just twice in our opening five Premier League matches this season. Our fewest at this stage of a league season since 94-95 when we scored just one. We have converted just 3.4% of our efforts at goal, two out of 59. But having said that, the only way is up, surely, Duke. Yeah, I mean, listen, we're we're in a situation, Rob, at the minute where what what scares me is take care, Kent. We're cheers, Kent. What scares me is we're we're, we're having the shots. If you look at that, we've had sixty shots, yeah, fifty nine, sixty shots, and uh, well, why we're we not converting them. You know, even, even you know we, the one we scored on bloody Sunday was deflected, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, but you got you you got to buy the ticket to win the lottery, as they say. So I'm not going to sort of criticise. No, know. I'm not criticising that, but we have got to be better with our conversion. Yeah, I'd, I'd yeah, like to know how point. many of those were on target. To be honest with you, 
Yeah, fair point. Right, factoid number two. We have won three of our last six Premier League games against Chelsea with three defeats, which is as many as we'd had in our previous 26 with six draws and 17 defeats thrown in for good measure. So we've, we've got decent recent form against this lot, as well as the yeah. fact that their their form in the Premier League this season has been not what I think most Chelsea fans would be looking for. No, I mean, the thing is, right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to a point where we're kind of, um, I won't say we're, we're becoming Chelsea's bogey team, but we're, we're turning things around against them and it's quite funny. They don't like playing us and they're, gonna, they're not going to enjoy this tomorrow. They really won't. The you know the players, the fans are going to be uh, yeah they're going to be interested with um. I, I think we're going to yeah I, I think they're going to struggle with this again tomorrow. I think if we can go the, the the two big boys up top, they're really going to struggle. Are you saying it could be squeaky pump bum time for Thomas Tushel? Thomas Tushy, squeaky Tushy, yeah. Probably. Be interesting. Fact, factoid number three. Chelsea have lost twice already in the Premier League this season, winning two and drawing one. Only once in the history of the competition have the Blues lost as many as three in their first six matches, doing so in the 2015-16 campaign where they won two, drew one and lost three. Which, if I remember correctly, and Kent's gone now, so he, I can't use him to corroborate, but I'm fairly sure they were actually the defending league champions because they I'm sure they won it in 2014-15. I'm fairly mm -hmm. sure I'm right. So that was I'm sure that was the that was the season, the first game of the season. That was where he had a go at their phys, the, his own physio. That um was it Eva? Portuguese. Bird. Oh Fitty. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Remember that? Yeah, I've, I've pulled my groin, love. Can I get a rub? Oh, Brozier signed a new six-year contract. Mind you, contracts don't mean an awful lot. It just means that you've got to pay more to get them out. More to get them out of it, yeah. Yeah. So, right. Factoid number four. Chelsea have won only six of their last 16 Premier League home games with eight draws and two defeats, having won six of their eight at Stamford Bridge before this. In this run, they've dropped 13 points from leading positions, which is as many as they had in their previous 44 home league games. That's got to be a, a reason for optimism, isn't it? Well, listen, I'm optimistic anyway. I really well, that's am. Just, uh, that's got to make that you even helps. happier still. Oh, yeah. Factoid number five. Chelsea have lost just one of their last 16 home league games against us with 11 wins and four defeats. And the last Should time the they lost, around. yeah, last time they lost was a one nil against them in November 2019. Can you remember who scored? Three years ago, uh, it was the dying embers of the Pellegrini reign. Someone charging down the left flank should give you a clue. Um, no, I'm gone. Cresswell. That was the David Martin L? game. Oh, of course Aaron, it was. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, for some reason, my brain went Yarmolenko. But that was the home game. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. We are going to clear off very shortly because my I think my dinner's about to be dished up. Um, yeah. I, I, I Listen, I said a 2-1 away win earlier. Would I take a draw? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Obviously. I think a, 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 a draw... A, a, a draw would be a good a good result for us. It, it would. Um, it's a bit tight on me now, Larry. I'm I'm I'm, I'm having a kind of fat bastard there's, moment. You know what I mean? There's a pure gym just down the road from you. Yeah, I know. It's right. I'm walking across Mordor now, Rob. Um, five miles right. a day. It's all good. Don't worry. Um, no, I, I yeah. I, mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a. That's a bold one, that. He's going, I like that. He's going brave. He's going He's going balls deep with that. Well, it's a conversation for another day. <laughs> any, uh, any final thoughts before we wrap it up, mate? 
Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported us over the course of the last, oh, 21 months, Rob, I think. No. Yeah. No. 20 months. Is it? 20 months. Yeah. November. No. Whatever. Yeah. 20 months. Yeah, it is. Because we've got September, October, November, December. No. I don't know. We're in the ninth month. It's, it's a blur. It's a blur. 19 months. 19 months. Just want to say thank you to everyone that's been part of this. Not even since the start, those that have joined, uh, you know, as we've been yeah. going along. Um, what I will say is, um, you know, we did, we did an interview with Stuart Slater. We did the interview with Tony Carr. Yep. We've got others coming up. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I never expected to, you know, sit here in, in the comfort of my office one dark Tuesday evening um, and, and interview a, a boyhood hero of mine. You know, um, crazy, crazy, you know, thoughts going through my head before, just before I came up, chopped my laptop on and you were, the, I mean, listen, guys, you you couldn't see it, but when, when I heard the boink in the bottom of the screen as, uh, as Stuart came on, I was like, it was like a kid in a candy shop. I'm not going to lie to you. Cheers, Larry. So I just want to say thank you for everyone that's followed us, everyone that's continuing to do so. Those of you, you know, all, you know, new friends and old, um, you've all been brilliant. I've, I've had the great pleasure of meeting a few of you. Um, cheers, Larry. Thank you. Um, Andy, who's in the chat Greg's, at the minute. Greg's ones. I'm going to get a pair of Greg's Crocs, yes. Have you seen um, fucking awful? Underwear and t-shirts. Yes, I have. Yes, no. my, my my nephew has a pair of boxer shorts. Um, my daughter I will got say, a pair of Crocs. No, oh, good girl. Um, I met I met a certain Mister Walsh um, at the Arsenal game. Uh, took Grace, and I'm, I'm I'm sat in the Bobby Moore lower for the Arsenal game, about eight nine rows back. The seats in front of us are empty, and this lump of a fella, I mean, monster. Right, tall, like a big fella, tall. Not, I'm not calling him fat. Fuck me, let's clear that up straight away. This big lump of a geezer comes and stands right in front of me on the row in front and just stares at me, Rob. Right? <laughs> I'm doing this in my pants, right? Oh, well, you're not, this fella you're not off. small yourself, to be fair. No, I know, but I'm, I'm at a point where have, have I pissed this guy off? Have I, have I said something? Did I like, steal his pint? Of, right, and he just looks at me, and goes, "You right, Duke?" I realise I have my full from Iron shirt over the top, so obviously they have my name on the back. So I'm like, "Okay, he, he knows my name, maybe because of that." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "You right, mate?" <laughs> you right, Grace? You know, like this shit. And he goes. <laughs> he goes, Walshy. I was like, oh, Walshy, of course it is. Yes. Be still my beating heart. Like, calm the fuck down a bit. You know, I hate it, Rob. I hate it. I did it with, um, is it Dave Jenkins? He's Dave. My cousin. I was standing, at, yeah, I was standing, at, I think it was. I was standing at the traffic lights with, um, with Joe and the kids coming right. across. From um, uh, outside, is it the cow? What's the bar on the corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come across, yeah, yeah. and this bloke taps me on the shoulder. I turn around. Oh, yeah, right, mate. Hi, Duke. All right. Blue Ford from my own shirt on. It's got my name on the back of it. It's all right. He went. You look a lot taller in real life than you do on the telly, and a lot more ugly. <laughs> Dave, that, Dave Jenkins. That, I was like, oh, all right, I got you. Yeah. I just wish these people had say to me, the opening gambit of when I meet people for the first time is, oh, dude, you're a forge from Iron. I'm such and such in the chat. 
That's all I'm asking for. Stop scaring the shit out of me. Don't stand there and stare at me. Don't make comments about how ugly I am. I remember when Steve turned up at my old pub and he's like, you all right, Duke? And I'm just like, yeah. Oh, I'm Steve 50. Thank fuck for that. Right. Now I know you are. We can have a conversation. Massive disadvantage. People know what I look like. For for better or for worse. Anyway, so meeting you guys. I I mean, I know you've met Kent in the chat, haven't you? And Lucas, who's just turned up. I've I've had the pleasure of of meeting him when he came over. There's been a couple of you. Jokes earlier, Lucas. (laughs) They were jokes. No, I didn't. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, yeah, I bet you laughed hard. But it was just, it's been, it's been fantastic to, to do this. Um, like I say, I didn't expect much of it when we first started. And here we are, just over 1,300 people down the line interviewed two heroes of ours. Let's be honest, we have. Um, hopefully another couple coming up. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say thank you to them, but also I want to say thank you to you, my man, because... Um, you know, <laughs> eight out of ten. I'll take it. If it. I'll take it. If it wasn't for you, um, we wouldn't be doing this. You know, you're you're the uh, you're the. I remember it, Ken. <laughs> then I said, I ran Ken Hammers. Yes. Um, yeah. I, he, he yeah, introduced no, me and he he told me is because his his real name's not Ken. No, I know. It is me, kids on YouTube. It is. <laughs> look, it's me. I'm going downstairs to DJ in a minute in the pub. All right, this is my office. It's me. Um, what? Your dinner? No, I'm just uh, him. Oh, him. me. You. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be doing up as much as what we do. You're the one that does all the chasing. You're the one that does all the, um, you know, the thumbnails. You're the one that does all the, the posting. What are you wanting now, boy? Get out. I'm not. You're naked. It's on the floor inside the door, going in the front room. Back in the room. I need to lock the door or I'm going to kill him. Not on a live stream. But no, thank you, Rob, for making this what it is. Ah, listen, it's, we, we, we both do our, our fair share. Don't worry about that. So, right. Okay. And that made Lucas laugh out loud. Na- naked apart from Unlike my jokes. dinosaur, uh, dinosaur, uh, Duke, that Duke about midnight. Yeah, I'll I tell you what, there is a picture of me doing the rounds on Facebook, Larry. Go look for it. Oh, I'm actually no. asleep. No, I am. I'm asleep in a mess hall on an army barracks, naked apart from a pair of Scooby Doo boxer shorts, and it was on New Year's Eve. It was very. Very messy. The picture is on Facebook. I tell you that it's on Facebook. It's on your profile, yeah. right? On my oh, profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe, I'll Joe, tag me in it. I think there's also a picture that just quickly before you go and have your dinner. That I can't believe I'm about to say this. Um, oh, no. Oh, I was no. I was doing training with Green King um, as part of my management course, um, and this was around the same time that I did. Uh, we, we were asked for inf- influential leaders, and I said Hitler, and absolutely left everyone aghast. Uh, <laughs> me saying Hitler for an influential leader. We'll come back to that. We'll cover that in another video, Rob. Um, but the woman, the woman, when I went to do my second course, came up to me. Um, she added me on Facebook. Yeah. Her name was Emily. Emily Lochnan. Um, she's married to a lovely guy called David. I've not met him yet, but I know he's a lovely guy from everything she told me. Um, she came up to me and asked me about a charity picture that I put on Facebook once. Okay. And it was, it was for cancer. It was, it was my, my, my uncle died of, of, of lung cancer. Okay. And I had the, the, the great honor of, of carrying him in, um, uh, carrying the coffin into the church. Oh, I've only ever done that once. And I shit it was myself. A, he was he was six foot six, and he I tell you what, unless that fucking thing was lead lined, he weighed a ton. The bastard, right? He had his own back because he was heavy, right? So we we all went to the wake at the end, and we all got a bit tanked up. And this was a time that a certain trend was uh, was going around Facebook about putting your manhood in a sock. Oh Jesus! 
posting it on on Facebook, tagging X amount of friends, donating to cans. It basically was called cock in a sock, Rob. That's what it I, was. I right? remember. I remember. Now, I won't lie to you. It's very difficult when you're um, you're not in the mood to get, or even even slightly in the mood. You know, a little bit of a lazy. Was it cold? It's well, no, it wasn't. It was cold. It was just very difficult to get the sock to stay put unless you kind of wrapped it around your bollocks and and like kind of. Sorry, kids that are watching Rebecca, but yeah, Becca's I, already I, I looking know for what his you picture. Did. You... You got a glove, didn't you? And you, you, you used a pair of scissors to cut off one finger, the little finger. I, 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 I won't lie. I've got a football sock. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, this woman that's a trainer, mate, I shit you not. She came up to me, pulled me to one side and she went, you know, we're friends on Facebook. I was like, yeah. She went, I saw the picture. I was like, what picture? The what picture. <laughs> didn't think nothing. I was like, what are you on about? What picture? She went, I got two words. I was like, go on in. She went, football sock. And I just went, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The colour went, Shh. It's still there. I didn't delete it. It came up on my memories, actually, not so long ago. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the, the, I have to say, you know, embarrassing... Uh, uh, fucking less than point five. Um, I, I tucked, I, I, but I had to think of things so it didn't slide off the end. Not gonna lie, it was half mast. Jesus, you reveal too much. You do. This is on Facebook. Not enough. Go have, go have a go have a look, Rob. Just type in. I, the... I will when I when I'm sort of. I don't know. I wonder. When I can't sleep or something, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 not when you can't sleep because that's going to make it even harder for you, that's isn't it? Probably true. Yeah. Well, yeah, not harder. That's that. the wrong choice of words, Rob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I can't Wouldn't believe. Be I can't believe that. It's not butter. I can't believe it's still on there, Rob. Actually, I'm pretty sure. You're going to send it to me now, aren't you? Um, well, I'm not. I'm just trying to I'm find I'm probably going if... to look for it anyway, so. Not. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear. I can't find it. I think I'm quite safe. I think it might have even been banned from Facebook. I mean, I can, I can only but hope, right? I mean. <laughs> oh, give, thankfully. Tell you what. Give give the pub a uh, put my teeth back in engagement. Give the pub a plug. Um, Where can they find you? Uh, Lewis from Tavern, um, one of the I road, uh, London SE thirteen five OD. Or tomorrow will be the Louis Charm Tavern in the south of France. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll. Um... Are you going to go full on Charles Aznavour and all that bollocks? I might wear a beret. Oh, hello. Very continental. Are you going to be serving My... croissants? and Croissants, yeah. Ma everyone's going to be morning. drinking dry martini? I don't know. Is martini French? Possibly. No, it's Italian, isn't it? It's Italian. It's a vermouth. Mm -hmm. what's, what's a French drink? Champagne? That can be expensive. I don't fucking behave yourself. I ain't going that far. What's the matter with you? Oh, all right. Cronenberg 1664, then. Cronenberg, indeed. Right. Right. Okay. Shall we uh, clear off old son? I'm going to look for this that's, photograph. That's, that's, yeah, I can't find it. So I'm going to have to. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll bloody find it. Don't worry. I'll find it. To be continued. Yeah. I'll <laughs> let you know. Right. Before we go, ladies and gentlemen, um, please don't forget to give the Iron Supporting Food Bank your support if you can see your way clear to doing so this is a charity that operates in the Newham Borough area trying to help people put food on their plates in these tough times so there is the just giving link if you can please see your way to support them it would be very much appreciated thank you very much indeed for your support talking of support please don't forget to support the channel like comment and share the stream to your social media platforms and talking of social media platforms you might find an interesting photograph of Duke on his 
but that's another story. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon, which is probably bigger than Duke's bell. Uh, <laughs> but there you go. Um, for alerts on new content, and as always, we thank you very much indeed for your support, um, which is more support than Duke's Hampton got from the football sock. But that's another story. <laughs> That's another Corey or another yeah, story. Th- th- both, both. <laughs> anyway, right. I'll, I'm I'm going to hit the outro. We Before shouldn't. We, we do, shouldn't mate. be let out, Rob. We shouldn't. In fact, we're not. We're we're both in our respective ab- abodes. So you know, <sighs> is what it is. Right. Okay, Duke. What are we? Like my sock, fucking massive. I'm like, what was in it? <laughs> Come on, <the> lions. <laughs> Yeah.